Joining us now, a very special guest here in the studio, Toby Young. I mentioned earlier, the associate editor of The Spectator and founder of the Free Speech Union and The Daily Skeptic. Toby, great to have you here in Australia. Have you here in the studio with us? A real privilege. Um, you're here promoting the Free Speech Union, which is already doing great work. We had Celine, Celine against Baumgarten, Celine against the Machine, on the show the other day, um, against and the, all the nonsense of the e-safety commissioner. What have you learned since being in Australia? Is it what you feared it would be? Is it better or is it worse, Toby? I think, Rowan, that the woke mind virus is slightly less evolved in Australia <laughs> than in the UK. I think you're about two years behind us, so you've got um, some, some bad stuff oh, coming no, your way. please. But in some respects, you're ahead of us, so I'm here partly to try and not just to promote the work of the Free Speech Union of Australia, which is doing great work, as you say, but also to try and see what the future holds for us, because in some respects, you're ahead of us. So if I want to know what a Keir Starmer-led huge majority Labour government is going to do in the UK, I only have to look at the state of Victoria, uh, the, the People's Republic of Victoria. So a, con a conversion therapy ban, which, uh, which happened in Victoria a few years ago, that looks like that's going to be brought in by Keir Starmer's Labour government. There's also, I think, a lesson for the um, Conservatives and reform about how to work together and not cannibalise each other's votes by looking at the way the Liberal Party and the National Party have worked together, have a non-aggression pact um, uh, in Canberra here. So that's also potentially a useful lesson. So, Toby, let's talk about the uh, British election. Uh, Farage got five seats, which was better than expected. You predicted two or three. Other people were predicting 13 or even 18. So uh, Nigel was predicting 18, I think, <laughs> but as he should. Um, what is going to happen in Britain? Massive majority for Labour. How, how scary is Keir Starmer? I think he's pretty scary. Um, he, um, uh, he, he's a kind of, I think, the last gasp of technocratic managerialism. People have been portraying this as at odds with what's happening in the rest of Europe, mm. on continental mm. Europe, where we've seen a lot of insurgent populist right-wing parties do well in the recent European Parliament elections. Looks like they're going to do well in France on Sunday in the second election in France. Um, and I don't think that what's happening in the UK is all that different. Only 20% of the population actually voted for Keir Starmer. It's the lowest number of votes polled of any winning majority, I think, uh, wow. since something like 1832. Wow. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really extraordinary. Um, and, uh, but we see the, the, the vote for the two main parties, the Uniparty, is lower than it's ever been, I think, since 2018. That's how I calculated it. Yeah, it so it looks like there's a collapse in, in the te technocratic managerialist approach that both Excellent. parties have been embodying. It may... That the the, the stats bear that out, but it's still going to be seen as a huge endorsement for Labor's uh, policies. It's an enormous landslide. The, the 65 per cent of the seats, I think, they roughly hold. Um, how do you think they're going to govern? Because when you look at some of the things there, uh, senior people say who are going to hold powerful positions, you really do worry about what the UK is going to be like in three or four years. Yeah, well... Um... Uh, I guess the hope is that even though they have this um, super woke authoritarian agenda and they're going to unleash various assaults on free speech, not just mm. a conversion therapy ban, probably a hate crime act in England and Wales to mirror that that was passed in Scotland. Um, uh, Quasi blasphemy laws, it looks like. Some kind of criminalisation of Islamophobia to placate these insurgent oh. uh, Islamist parties. Um, uh, but um, hopefully um, all this will be done with a keystone cops-like incompetence. <laughs> our, our foreign secretary, David Lammy, oh, he makes oh, yeah. Boris Johnson as foreign secretary look like Palmerston. I mean, he's just <laughs> he astonishingly cool. He literally <laughs> thinks men can grow a cervix or have one implanted. I, I watched an interview with we him. We can't? What? Not yet. Rita, Baron, it's not knock possible. me down. Well, and just, and just, well, and just on that note, you know, all ladies out there, time for your prostate exam. Make sure you get that. <laughs> but, the, uh, but I just want to ask you, though, about, you know, uh, Rita mentioned Islamophobia a moment ago. It seems there's this really weird thing happening here in Australia, also in Britain, where you have a woke green left 
in politics, making alliance and common cause with people who, in any other circumstances, are the least woke and the least lefty of all. These people who are, you know, firmly very much voting with the interests of the Islamic Ummah. They identify with that rather than necessarily their own electorate or the nation in which they live. Tell me what is happening here and what is your take on does this wind up, when you get these seats taken in parliament, things are going to start to pull apart very quickly when these identity politics start to come into play, won't they? Yes, I mean, it's, um, it's a really worrying development in this general election campaign, the emergence of an ethno-nationalist yeah. voting bloc. And I say ethno-nationalist not because they're patriotic Britons. The country they're representing is Gaza. Um, and that's really dangerous. We don't want a sectarian group being able to influence Labour Party foreign policy, not in Britain's national interest, but in the interests of a foreign state. Yeah. So that's deeply alarming. And it's odd, as you say. I mean, it's like teals in headscarves, you know, queers for Palestine. What is it that they, the, the kind of, uh, the greenies <laughs> well, and the Islamists they're, they're have in common? Well, they're Hermes headscarves, just so you know. So they're Hermes headscarves <laughs> that the teals wear. So. OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, 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 I, I guess it's, um, I mean, uh, one thing that Lionel uh, Shriver said mm. is that the left choose their politics from the pre-fixe menu. Um, they, d they don't distinguish between, you know, um, uh, LGBT rights and being pro-Palestinian. Somehow they're compatible because they're all on one side of the menu and they just pick the entire menu. They don't differentiate between different policies according to whether they actually are compatible. Well, they, I mean, they've got the philosophy, my enemy's enemy is my friend, and that seems to be the basis of a lot of these allegiances is they have a shared enemy in the Conservatives, but what do you see for conservatism in, in the UK? Because the Tories have been such an enormous disappointment. They have not governed like Conservatives. Do you see reform lasting and, and bringing in those disaffected Tories into the fold? Well, um, they've certainly done an enormous amount of damage to the Conservative Party, and the reason the Conservative Party is down to 121 seats is because mm. reform field, fielded candidates in every single constituency. Um, whether there can be some kind of alliance, mm. I think a merger is probably unlikely. Why? Because Nigel Farage will insist that if the, if the parties merge, he's going to have to be the leader, yeah. and there are going to be some Conservative MPs who balk at that prospect. And they've also got to worry about winning back some Conservative voters who went to the left, who defected to Labour and the Lib Dems. So if they forged, if they merged with reform, it might be difficult to win those mm. defectors back. More likely, I think, is some kind of non-aggression pact, like the relationship between the Liberals and the National Party here, or, 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 or perhaps some, some kind of organised... they're a coalition, they're a formal coalition, so would they be able to live with that? To... Well, I think, I think if, if there's a non-aggression pact between reform and the Conservatives in 29, when our next general election is due, and they each win enough seats to collectively form a majority government, then yeah, there could be a, a working coalition. Um,